If you have complicated GERD, then you may be considering anti-reflux surgery. And if so, then boy, is this the video for you, because we're going to be discussing the options and complications for anti-reflux surgery. GERD can often be controlled with medications, but when ongoing inflammation persists and causes problems like ulcers, strictures, and Barrett's esophagus, then anti-reflux surgery is an option to consider. The classic anti-reflux surgery is the Nissen fundiplication. It was named for the surgeon Nissen who first devised it, and it involves taking the fundus of the stomach, which exists right at the inlet from the esophagus, picking that up and wrapping it around the esophagus to make it snug. This Nissen fundiplication may be done with a hiatal hernia repair. It is a durable and often very effective surgery, but it can be too effective and it can become difficult to pass food through the esophagus, a symptom of dysphagia. Now it's normal right after the surgery that you're going to have swelling and that will make it much more troubling to swallow. So if you're in that position right now, fear not, chances are good that month to month you will notice vastly improved function but there are a portion of patients who will have persistent dysphagia, trouble swallowing, even after that first window post-op. Because of this well-known complication, it is important to establish upfront if a patient has difficulty swallowing, and it can be helpful to perform an esophageal motility test as a study to see if the esophagus has the appropriate squeeze and coordination to smoothly move food down from the mouth into the stomach to know that it's gonna have the strength to endure even after that fund application is performed. And just as it can be difficult to get food down, it can also be difficult to get gas back up. When we eat, we're swallowing small amounts of air and under normal circumstances, we are venting that from our stomach. When this is an eruptive vent, it forms a belch. Your stomach intends to release this gas in a controlled way. It doesn't want to release reflux because that acid will burn the esophagus. And in this way, Reflux is kind of like a shart. You meant to pass some gas, but oops, you passed a bit more. At times, this complication of having difficulty releasing stomach contents can be especially bothersome when a patient has gastroenteritis and they would want nothing more than to be able to vomit. And yet they suffer because they're unable to. So these symptoms can become very disconcerting. You might think, oh, that's nice. I'll never again belch. And yet when you think about it, it's none too pleasant. When these complications occur, it can be helpful for a GI doctor to perform a dilation to loosen the wrap. To plan for that, a barium swallow can be performed, in which a patient swallows both a barium liquid and a tablet, and by visualizing how those pass through the esophagus, we can plan this procedure. Given these concerns of bloating and difficulty swallowing, it becomes a big decision to perform an anti-reflux surgery. And wouldn't it be great if there was some Goldilocks surgery that would make a wrap that's not too tight, not too loose? Well, there are some options with a plethora of various surgeons who took it upon themselves to make variations of the original Nissen, and they have aptly named these procedures after themselves. Most of these modified surgeries have about a three quarters wrap around the esophagus rather than doing the complete wrap of the fundus around the esophagus that is typical of the Nissen fundiplication. Giving up that little bit makes it so that there's not as much trouble with difficulty swallowing or with gas bloat. And so patients may prefer these, but may not be as effective at controlling reflux. And if the wrap is too loose, it can cause a slip and almost like a hiatal hernia. So that has its own downsides. Operating around the stomach always carries the risk that we're going to injure the vagal nerve and that can stun the stomach, which can become a permanent paralysis and a condition called gastroparesis in which it does not empty as quickly as normal, leaving you constantly feeling full or it may have a phenomenon called dumping syndrome where it all of a sudden just gushes its contents forward and overwhelms the duodenum's ability to process sugar and liquids. Any abdominal surgery will have potential complications of infection, bleeding, complications of the anesthesia, and delayed healing of the wound site. There's also always the risk that you'll develop a hernia at the incision site. Now surgery may seem like an ideal alternative to medication because it seems permanent. Yet these surgeries often have to be revised after about 10 years. And those revision surgeries can be much more difficult because of the scar that's already formed in the area. I hope this video helps you to understand some of the considerations that have to be made before proceeding with anti-reflux surgery. Thank you for watching and be safe.